Who knew that dancing beside a big purple dinosaur would eventually lead to one of the most iconic careers of our generation? She's a pop singing sensation, film producer, actress, mental health advocate, cooking show host, entrepreneur, and one of the most followed people on Instagram. Unless you are like hardcore team Haley, you cannot help but love Selena Gomez. And as she recently hit Apple TV with her biopic, My Mind and Me, I feel like I can definitely relate to the girl really well. So today I'll be channeling my inner bad liar and eating like Selena Gomez for a day. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I will be eating like pop star Selena Gomez. But I mean, not quite because my needs are unique. So I'll be using her alleged meals as a template for teaching gentle nutrition and inspiring what I make that works for my body and me. Also a reminder that this diet was compiled from some primary and secondary sources. So ultimately I cannot speak to its legitimacy or accuracy. And another reminder that this is just what I decided to eat on a random day and is not ever meant to be copied or recommended as how you should eat. As always, please speak to a registered dietitian about your unique needs. And if you are not already subscribed, guys, help a YouTuber out, hit that subscribe button and follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. Okay, Abby, I'm hungry, get at me. Okay, so according to Selena's trainer and nutritionist, Amy Rosoff Davis, Selena foregoes coffee in the morning for some green tea instead. I'm not sure I love that idea, but Abby, are there any legitimate reasons for this swap? Okay, first things first, Abby, like we always say, drink your caffeine how you like it and let no one make you question it. But since you asked, let's lay down the facts. So we know that coffee provides about three times the amount of caffeine compared to green tea. So for folks who are particularly caffeine sensitive, green tea may be a better swap if they enjoy something warm in the morning and still wanna get like a modest caffeine hit. Green tea also contains the amino acid L-theanine, which metabolizes caffeine at a slower rate. So a lot of folks find that they get a more stable source of energy throughout the day without the usual coffee caffeine crash. Green tea is also abundant in the antioxidant EGCG, which is anti-inflammatory in nature and may help to protect against cancer. But coffee also has its own anti-cancer properties thanks to antioxidants like CGA. So yeah, six in one, half a dozen in the other. At the end of the day, it really comes down to your own personal preference and tolerance. I also have a whole video where I myth bust some common claims about coffee, which you can watch right here. Yeah, I feel like my day would be totally ruined without my coffee, but I'm down to double fist it. So let's make a little green tea action and we can kind of like, you know, hydrate. All right, a little dip, dip, dip. Is this the technique? I do not know. I'm not a tea drinker, but we'll take a little sip. It's hot. It's hot. And it's not as good as this. But again, all hydration is good hydration. So other than the tea, according to Vogue, Selena also makes a point to drink lots of water. Um, and apparently it doesn't need to be that fancy alkaline or lemon water. So yeah, I can manage that folks. Um, and she also loves freshly squeezed juice. Abby, what's the deal on juicing? I think you know what I'm gonna say here, Abby. So let's just keep it short and sweet. Juiced fruits and veggies are delicious, refreshing, hydrating, and a great way to get in some of those micronutrients and antioxidants in one solid big dose. However, it's worth noting that juicers also strip fruits and veggies of their natural fibers. So they're never gonna be as satiating as the whole fruit. Also, juice tends to have higher concentrations of FODMAPs compared to the whole foods. So if you have a sensitive tummy or have IBS, you might want to ease in with the portion sizes. I'm admittedly not really a juice person. Like I'm pretty sure I have a juicer in the basement that I got like seven years ago as a wedding present that I still have not opened. Oh. <laughs> This is why I don't like juice, guys. It always does me wrong, always does me dirty, literally. Literally doing me dirty here. Oh my God, okay. Well, a little dribble, whatever. That's, that's my life as a mom. I'm always covered in something. Okay, regardless, 
I'm gonna go with this one. I found this at the grocery store. No need to freshly squeeze anything. Cold pressed, fresh and delicious. Oranges, watermelon, pineapple, and lemon. I felt like that's my style. A little sweet, a little sour. Mmm, tastes like a sunrise. I love that. With some tequila, she be banging. Oh, gotta get the water, gotta get the water. We've gotta have the full morning lineup here. All right. Water, tea, juice, my own addition, coffee. Enough with the liquids though, let's talk breakfast. So according to Selena's nutritionist, breakfast is either a breakfast burrito, love that, yogurt bowl or avocado toast. All solid options in my opinion. Though I feel like I've had enough avocado toasts and like smoothie bowls or yogurt bowls with all these celebrity diets to last me a lifetime. So we're making a burrito, let's do it. All right, scramble up some eggies, a little salt and pepper. We'll do two eggs for a burrito. Mm, yeah, let's throw it down. We're gonna just scramble the egg. I mean, I don't know, I can't do an omelet. I'm just, that's just not being my forte. Guys, I'm obsessed with corn in eggs. I don't know what it is, the sweetness with the savory, with the cheese, it just hits different. So I got the corn, I'm gonna add in some bell peppers as well and just like let it do its thing. Oh, we have cheese too, but I'm gonna let that move around for just a hot minute before we get in there. Basically, I like a one-to-one -one ratio of eggs to cheese. I mean, you do you. That'll do. Hello. And basically I'm just gonna wait for that cheese to melt and we're gonna plate her up. So as usual, my avocado is temperamental, but I have this avocado hummus and I was like, hey, why not? Let's throw that bad boy in. There's no rules when it comes to burritos, folks. You put in whatever you've got. So I'm doing a layer of that. It's actually smells really good. And I love that. I love the idea of avocado hummus. It's like the best of all wor worlds. So that's going down. Also, I forgot to put the beans into my egg mixture, but it doesn't matter because I'm just gonna put some down now. So that's how recipes roll. Again, there's no rules. Throw those bad boys in. Here comes the egg cheese veggie mixture. And we're gonna try to put some salsa in, but I know this is gonna be a real messy adventure. Just a little on top for some flavor. You know when you bite into a burrito and you just get a, a mouthful of salsa? That's the experience I'm going for. This rolling situation is not my forte, but we're gonna give it a valiant effort. Okay, squeeze them tight, yeah. They would fire me first day at Chipotle, faux show. I mean, it's gonna be consumed immediately, so it's okay if it doesn't like look great. Just gonna slop that onto my plate, tuck in the sides a little more. I'm keeping it real, guys, I'm keeping it real. This is what most of my meals look like. Just like how fast can I get them on my mouth without getting them all over my shirt? Let's serve this with some berries so we get a little more color going on. I've got a nice big tub, some strawberries, raspberries, grapes. I am weirded out by the fact that my grape just touched my salsa. Not sure what I'm gonna do about that, but I'm just gonna keep, keep going. We can just press on. All right, little blackberry. This is enough before, oh God. Do I wash it? I'm just gonna try to just gonna try to be more laid back than I naturally am about it. All right, I think this meal is gonna require a napkin. So let's do one of these. This can go on the napkin. And let's talk about what we got. We've got lots of protein in our eggs and our beans. We've got healthy fats in the avocado hummus situation and some cheese in there. We've got fiber in the wrap and the berries, which are giving me a little anxiety because they are touching the salsa, but I'm gonna roll with it. Wish me luck, friends. This is gonna be messy. 
Mmm. That is so good. Oh, she's spicy too. Yep. All right, coffee check, breakfast check. Let's get into some movement. So according to Selena's trainer, some rules that Selena lives by when it comes to fitness is to stretch often for mobility, drink enough water for hydration, and never let your body get bored. I usually get a little freaked out when I hear the word rules, but those are definitely some rules I can get behind. And apparently she's into like a wide range of activities. So like yoga, cardio, Pilates, and hiking with her friends. Um, but I live in Canada and it is cold outside right now. So hiking is definitely off the table, but I definitely can get a little gentle movement in. Let's go downstairs, we'll do a little Pilates, walk on the treadmill and move our bodies. lunchtime around here and I am hungry AF. So Selena will usually have some sort of salad or like a power bowl for lunch. Um, one of her go-to salads is what she calls the power salad, which contains turkey, avocado, beans, or chickpeas, um, and a homemade dressing of red wine vinegar, olive oil, Dijon, and lemon. Love this for us. Um, I'm gonna get shopping, and while I do, Abby, can you give us like a little rundown on Selena's diet rules? So there is no question that Selena has had a hard go when it comes to her health, from being diagnosed with lupus, to getting a kidney transplant, to battling bipolar disorder. I mean, for 30 years young, that's a lot. And while the headlines of course have focused on what Selena eats for her rock and body, I also get the sense that a lot of her choices are to maintain her sense of well-being and health. And according to her nutritionist, the only diet rules that Selena lives by include no weighing, no dieting, eating more whole foods, and nourishing the body and soul. We love that. So this is a great example of making choices from a place of self-care rather than from deprivation and self-control. And this approach feels really on brand for Selena, who basically developed an entire cosmetics line that is dedicated to promoting self-acceptance, self-love, and mental well-being. Selena has also been very vocal about how much she loves food. So much so that she even developed an entire cooking show dedicated to cooking with professional chefs. If you guys haven't watched it, it is so cute definitely hit that up. But like all celebrities, Selena is no stranger to gross body shaming in the media, but she's also been a champion on social media for keeping it real and calling it out. I also love what she had to say about this red carpet look. I fluctuate a lot with my weight and I remember this night specifically, I didn't feel good about my body. So what was really amazing was that I actually got a chance to work on the dress that fit my body. That was one of the moments where I was like, I don't have to be that 19 year old body shape anymore because I'm not. This is in stark contrast with other celebrities who have dramatically and purposefully changed their bodies to fit into a dress. And it's a good reminder that Bodies change. They change as we age. They change through different phases of our life cycle. They change because of circumstance like disease and medication use. So for example, Selena has been cruelly body shamed for her puffy face and weight gain, which was a result of her steroids use to treat her lupus. Like how cruel are people? And I just want to clarify that it's not just wrong to comment on people's weight gain when it's the result of a disease as if to say, oh, well, it's not their fault. It's also wrong and in very bad taste to comment on people's changing bodies, period. Abby, I'm getting a little heated up over here. Let's get back to the food. Okay, so I basically took Selena's concept and I'm using what I have on hand. So we've got some iceberg, which come at me, I don't care. Yes, it's less nutritious than, you know, spinach, but it's way more delicious. And the way I see it is that it is like a blank slate. It is the canvas and I'm adding so much great nutrition with all of this beautiful color that it really doesn't matter that the base 
isn't that nutritious. So I've got some bell peppers and some tomatoes going down. I had some corn that I had cooked. I'm gonna throw that in as well. Nice color. I got some deli turkey a la Selena, some chickpeas. And this is something I actually really like to do is like if I'm gonna put, you know, an animal protein on my salad, I like to complement it with some plant-based protein as well, just to kind of balance everything out, get a little bit of all of that nutrition. I found an avocado. Let's just hope this one's good. I feel like it is, yes. You just know when you put that first slice in if she's gonna be good. Oh, totally deceiving. Definitely, definitely, you steered me wrong. You did me dirty. Let's see if we can get some, I think we have some respectable sections. Let's see, we can cut out these bits. Yep, I think we're okay. I mean, we gotta use what we can. And whenever I do have like a gnarly looking avocado, one thing I like to do is I just throw it into a smoothie because it's gonna get blended up anyways. In there, there we go couple pieces. Add some healthy fats. Got some feta here. Always love a little feta. And I actually kind of like, like to throw a little bit of the brine on top because it just like seasons everything. Nice. I've got some pita for some carbs, of course. Because yeah, a girl cannot live on lettuce alone. Throw that in there. And for the pita, since we had that avocado hummus earlier, add a little dollop right here for some dipping. Nice. And I've got this green goddess dressing, which is like so good. That actually just has like lemon juice and mustard and like lots of fresh herbs, olive oil. Smells amazing. All right, let's talk about it. We've got protein in our turkey and our chickpeas, plus healthy fats in the avocado and the avocado hummus and all that beautiful green goddess dressing. And of course, there's tons of fiber rich carbs in the pita and all the veggies that I threw on top. It's not exactly Selena salad, but I feel like it definitely passes the power salad test. Bro, do you need to do a compilation of me taking terrible salad bites because they all look like that. <laughs> all right, it is snack o'clock, let's get into it. So according to Teen Vogue, Selena's favorites include Cheetos, love it, chocolate, pickles, and veggies and hummus. And I feel like this is a really good example of what an intuitive eater's favorite snacks would look like. Like they're not all clean snacks and they're not all like forbidden junk foods. There's a little bit of everything in there because it's probably just what feels good to her body. I'm gonna like throw all those things on a plate and we'll make like the most random smorgasbord of a snack. Let's do it. All right, hummus down. The carrots can go close to the hummus but we have to create like a little bit of a moat because I don't want my Cheetos touching my hummus and I definitely don't want my chocolate in my hummus. All right, sweet pickles. I have dill pickles too, but I don't know. I feel like I need to balance out the sweet and the savory components in this meal. And so I'm going sweet, like come at me. Because I feel like these have like a cult following and I have yet to fully experience it. So, this was my reason to buy these today. Not that we ever need a, a reason to buy Cheetos. And I'm pretty sure the most important characteristic of a Cheeto is this. What do they call this? The cheetah, the Cheeto, the Chee, the Cheetum, the Cheetum, Cheetish? It has a name. Please leave me a comment below. This this has a legitimate like culinary name. The Cheetah, the Cheet, Cheat, cheat something, cheat cha, cheat chong, cheat cha chong effect. I can see clearly now the <laughs> we're, we're gonna get, we're gonna get, figure it out together. I also have my little variety pack, my little tickle trunk, so we will say, of chocolate. And I'm feeling like Mr. Big. I love Mr. Big. Mr. Big, is this the one with the wafer in it? Mr. Big, 
Do I have, oh, I actually, what I meant was Wonder Bar. That's actually what I meant. Wonder Bar is the one that I wanted. So, a Wunderbar. And yeah, look at this neck plate. I don't actually know where to start with this, but I'm thinking we're gonna start with the Flame and Hot Cheeto because I am a Flame and Hot Cheeto virgin and I'm ready to pop this cherry. Mmm, I can see why these are like so popular. It's spicy. I'm not sure how this combo is gonna go, but let's try it for a second. A little bite of Cheeto. I don't hate it. I don't. We're just gonna go to circle. I'm gonna make you watch me do it. That's a nice way to end. Cleanses the palate and then we start again. Holy sh It is so effing cold. It's like minus 20 outside. I'm sure my Americans are like, duff is that, but I am like chilled to the bone. I can't even like take my coat off right now. Just picked up the kids from school and I, I'm like craving miso soup. And thankfully our girl Selena is also a big fan of sushi. So I picked some up for dinner on my way home and thankfully my kids are also super into sushi night. Let's see what we got. All right, let's go where we got. I got a little sushi sampler here. So I've got lots of protein and healthy fats in our fish, some carbs in our rice, and lots of fiber in our veg, and also some more healthy fats in the avocado. Always gotta get edamame for some fiber and protein. I upgraded my little salad to their avocado salad. So I got some avocado in there for some more healthy fats. And the reason I ordered in the first place, miso soup. Somehow she's still warm from being in my frigid car, but I'm gonna just like sip on this for a few minutes until I de-thaw myself, get myself undressed, and sit down with the kids for dinner. Oh, that's so good. All right, let's finish this day off with something sweet. Selena girl, give me something good. I'm excited about this, but I have a confession to make. I like chocolate but I don't love it. I definitely don't like it all on its own. If there's chocolate, I have to have something to balance it out just because just the one note chocolate is too rich for me. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do some chocolate cake and turn it into a hunger crushing combo. Let's do it. Step one, buy a chocolate cake because you guys know I'm not making it from scratch. So I got a nice little slice here and like, if you love your chocolate, just have the chocolate cake. There is no reason you need to turn everything into a balanced meal if that's how you like it. But I just know for me, I guess it's just cause I'm getting old. I just feel better when I'm having a little bit more protein and healthy fats before bed, especially if I'm gonna be having something with a little bit more sugar in it. Not to mention, I just like a little color in there too. So I got my chocolate cake. I got a big scoop of some vanilla Greek yogurt. Got some strawberries here. Any other kind of berries in my little bowl here. Some almonds for some crunch. I know this technically is a forkable dessert, but I already dirtied this one up and I'm not gonna dirty another one. So to recap, we've got some protein in our Greek yogurt. We've got healthy fats in our nuts and fiber in all those berries. Plus the fun factor, we got our chocolate satisfying and satiating. That's how I like to do dessert. Mm. Okay, so this girl already won me over with Calm Down, but she's really got me now that I know what a shining example she is with her relationship with food and her body. She doesn't believe in the usual offenders that are rampant in celebrity wellness circles like weighing or dieting or pseudoscience wellness trends. Instead, she approaches food and movement from the same place that she approaches most things in her life, from a place of self-love and self-care. She eats the foods that are emotionally and physically satisfying to her. She's not married to like a rigid workout routine that doesn't feel good. And she honors her love of food by learning from the experts and getting her hands dirty. If this is not an example of intuitive eating, I don't know what it is. So that's all that I have for you guys today, folks. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on whose diet you'd like to see me try out next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. 
Bye.